hoist up the mainsail and calibrate those silver bridges. For today, we're learning to paint the Soul Ward Swashbuckler, the ineffable Three Eyes Brink. This Soul Ward weaves throughout the battlefield, a scrapper in both combat and in appearance, a proud entry into the Dawn Raider Syndicate. And without further ado, pick up your brush, and let's figure out how to paint Three Eyes Brink, the amazing robot pirate. Yo ho ho and a bottle of ram! I found this little guy to perhaps be the most challenging figure to paint from NGC Wave 1. There are many details to bring out, and its smaller size required a bit more precision and focus. Starting off, the cloak was the biggest and brightest part of the body, so I chose to do that part first. I started off by using Vallejo Purple as the base. Out of my multitudinous paint brands I use, I really like Vallejo for its coverage and price point and it's definitely my recommendation for the new skate painter. I made sure to rotate the figure all around using a homemade paint handle I constructed from PVC pipe and sticky tack. You can buy more professional looking handles from companies like Citadel, but I found my method to work just as well. I have sausage fingers and often drop my figures when painting, so when you have a model that's quite small like three eyes, it definitely helps you control your flow when painting. I spun the model around making sure to paint the underside of the cape in the hard to reach areas. Also be sure to not miss the bed rolls on its back and paint them purple as well. After I painted the cloak, I went through and found all the parts that would be metallic silver in the figure. Focusing first on the arms, face and leg by adding black Vallejo paint. After the various appendages were done, I added black to the canisters in the figure's chest, the weapons, and painted the buckles and buttons as well. Black paint is a good undercoat for silver metallics, as it allows the silver layer to appear more metallic, and adds some dark shading to the recesses or parts I missed. The general rule of thumb is a black undercoat for silver and use brown for golds or copper metallics. Sometimes when you're painting a figure, something doesn't work and you have to go back and fix it. As long as you keep your paints thin, almost any mistake can be remedied. I noticed the Vallejo purple I initially used was a bit too bright and didn't fully match the royal purple on the card. I used some light blue, in this case army painter crystal blue, and I replaced it onto my wet palette, mixing it with the Vallejo purple. When mixing paints, I recommend either using an old brush or the back part of your brush, as you won't damage the delicate ferrules and bristles. Since the paint was already pre thin from being on the wet palette, I was able to apply the new layer to the existing layer, painting right directly on top of the cloak. I used the darker tone primarily in the recesses and areas that would be darker in the cloak, allowing me to almost highlight and reverse. This step is optional, but I thought it was a cool opportunity to showcase how to course correct to avoid the coloration change. Once the black painting was done, I grabbed my oak brown from Army Painter and proceeded to add the color to any leather present on the figure, filling in all the straps, buckles, and pouches befitting this little renegade. Now, I usually don't recommend using speed paint for HeroScape figures as the look is a little bit different. But using brown speed paint for the leather does look really good and it's a fast and easy technique. Also note that after the leather was finished, I then applied the same dark brown to the parts I wanted to be bronze on the figure. As touched upon before, this is the same principle as the black undercoat for the silver. Brown allows the shadows and consistency of the applied metal to look darker and act as a good way to build up further highlights. 
Well, we made it so far. Our base coat is now done, and we can start adding metallics. I went through and added plate mail silver to the black base layer. Army Painter has my favorite metallics, as they really glisten and shine, match the HeroScape aesthetic. I then used a 50-50 mixture of weapon bronze and gritty gold from Army Painter to create a gritty gold look. Really go through and pick out all the details that you want to shine on this figure. Make sure you add solid coverage to the face, the belt buckles, and the tiny little buttons on the satchels and such. I went back and there was a bit of trial and error in figuring out which pieces of the arms and legs were gold and which were not. I then used a 50-50 mixture of weapon bronze and gritty gold from Army Painter to create a gritty gold look. My recommendation is to ultimately paint what looks best to you. Don't worry about it being symmetrical or uniform, and really try to make it look like hobbled pieces of disparate metal stitched together. Ultimately, I decided to add more gold to its hands and arms. I used brown legs a bit more sparingly, applying primarily to the joints and separating pieces. it's time for my favorite part of the paint process, the wash. Washes are thin, semi-transparent paint, and they're used to fill in recesses and harder to reach spots of the figure. You may choose to use separate color washes, accentuating the figure with different tones, or use one color wash over the figure, giving it a more autonomous looking shade. Both are acceptable, but be aware that washes do darken a figure's overall hue, so it's recommended to add highlights afterward. I next added a brown wash to the figure using dark tone from Army Painter. I focused on the leather as well as the arms and legs, looking to give it a dirty and scavenged feel. Finally, I thinned down Pro Krill Black Wash and added the face of three eyes, adding some nice contrast to the small details located on its head. After making sure the paint was dried, I grabbed my purple tone from Army Painter and applied it liberally to the cloak. Army Painter washes are a bit different from other brands like Pro Acryl or Citadel. I do not want to thin them down, but apply the consistency it came in. Notice how the recesses and dimensionality of the cloak darken and add much more new visual contrast. Normally when you paint a HeroScape figure, painting eyes are the last thing in your mind, and as the original figures have empty eye sockets, faintly outlined by the wash applied. However, the titular three eyes are a prominent important feature of this character, so I recommend giving it a whirl. Up to this point, I've primarily been using a medium sized brush, but I definitely would recommend getting a fine tip brush for this part. I often get comments on my eyes as people like the way they look prominent from a distance. The secret is relatively easy as the key lies in the simplistic nature of contrast. Firstly, I painted the eyes a prominent color and a darkened shade. The base color for the eyes are Army Painter Dragon Red, Army Painter Demon Yellow, and Citadel Cantor Blue. I mistakenly thought the eye was blue. However, if you want to be lore accurate and use a green base, I recommend Vallejo Green. I made sure my brush didn't have any dripping water, as that is the fastest way to ruin eyes as it will become too thin and flow into the face and make you have to start the face all over. I apply two layers of each of these colors to ensure that there was good coverage and no other colors showing through. After waiting for the paint to dry, add a brighter shade of the color to your palette and very delicately make a single dot directly in the center of the eye. For the red, I use pure red from Army Painter. For the yellow, use Army Painter Moon Dust used Army Painter Void Shield Blue. Apply two coats of varnish, one gloss, and a matte to get that HeroScape shiny look, and your figure is essentially done, looking like it does exactly on the card. This is a great model to practice highlights on, however, and I went through and did some edge highlighting to the robes and leather. 
especially focusing on the head and shoulders. If you like a video of me explaining how to elevate your models further, be sure to leave a comment below as I'd be happy to walk through some fun next steps. This guy took me about an hour and a half to paint, but that's honestly because I did a little extra in terms of details and had some issues matching colors in the beginning. Go through and make sure you paint all the details that you want to be shown. The flask on the hip I painted light blue and added gold to the metal squares in the back cloak. I picked out all the buttons and wiring in the backpack and added light brown to some parts of the satchel as well. Do as little or as much as you feel comfortable with. It's your motto after all, and all that matters is how much you like it. I hope this video encourages you to three eyes finish, because after all, unpainted figures tell no tales. And if you're interested in more paint videos, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. I'm going to be uploading the remaining tutorials for NGC Wave 1 in the upcoming weeks, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And if you're just hearing about NGC and want to know more about this awesome customs project for Heroescape, you can check out our website at newgenerationscustoms.com or join the Discord with the link in the description below. I'm the Roguescaper, once again, encouraging you to think differently. Thanks so much for watching.